Good day, how are you going? Welcome to Brutlosophy, and if you're new here, my name is Tech. And as I work and live on Wajit country in Western Australia, I acknowledge the Wajit people of Noongar Today, I'm taking a look at this uh, very laid back work boot, the Red Wing 3139 work chaka. This is the Red Wing Work Chaka Boot. The model number is 3139, which indicates it as the Work Chaka Boot in the Copper Worksmith Leather Makeup. It's a 105 millimeters tall, or a little over four inches. I don't have a lot of chaka boots, so this is a slight variation in my collection, which is focused more on six inch or above boots. As a chaka, basically an ankle length boot, it has only three eyelets and is built around what is quite a slim last for Red Wing boots, which are more focused on round and bulky toed work boots, like the Iron Ranger or the Blacksmith, or, or their wider, roomier lasted mock toe boots. You can see the slimness of the design from the top and from the side. The toe box is uh, also sleek and has a low volume. The stitching pattern, especially along the quarters and on top of the vamp, add a very uh, attractive interest starting with the famous Red Wing Puritan triple stitch on the quarters, and this interesting vamp piece that sets apart from the quarter and making this stylish joint to the tongue. It's set on a slim wedge sole, uh, so the whole appearance is almost dressy. As I said, the boot style is a chaka, and the most famous example of a chaka is of course the Clark's Desert Boot. As far as categories go, a desert boot is always a chaka, but not all chakas are desert boots. The chaka boot design goes back to the kingly sport of uh, polo in India. In polo, a chaka is a playing period of about seven minutes. You have between four to six chakas per game. They weren't actually worn in the game when players wore riding boots or jodhpur boots. Uh, no, the chaka boots were usually worn after the game when the players met up in the club bar to enjoy gin and tonic after the match. Particularly in India, chakas were made of softer suede or calf skin and provided sore feet with comfort after the game. The Clark's Desert Boot is a specific type of chaka boot designed by the Clark family after they saw how the Indian and South African uh, officers in the Desert War of the 1940s wore these very comfortable boots instead of the British Army's stiff service ammo boots. The Desert Boot was put on top of a crepe rubber sole for comfort and for stealth and was originally made only off suede for the comfort in the heat and was of a stitch down construction to keep the sand out. A chaka, as a wider category class, uh, includes desert boots but also includes ankle boots with a low number of eyelets made up of any material and can be on a different type of uh, heeled or flat sole. So that being said, chaka boots tend to be on the casual side but there are makers such as Alan Edmonds, Carmina, Crockett and Jones, and Loke, who make chuckers in dressy, smooth leathers that can even be worn with a suit. In this case, these can't be worn with a suit. Uh, some might try, uh, but certainly they can be worn as business casual. They work with simple dark pants and a business casual top, such as a button down uh, with or without any layers. They'll work with any kind of chinos, and because of their coppery red color, can match colors ranging from earth tones like brown uh, to other neutral colors like black or navy. Since Red Wing labeled them as work boots, obviously they'll also go with jeans and your rugged casual kind of gear. The Red Wing name Work Chaka puzzles me a little bit. Now work, as it relates to boots, can be a contentious subject. From the, um, hey dude, you don't work so you can't wear a boot fraternity. The term work heavily signifies manual labor. Most others would retort, I work too buddy, I work at a desk or in a hospital or I drive for a living or whatever. Anyway, Red Wing however, being predominantly a work boot as in manual work, work boot company, uh, when they name this a work chucker, I have to assume they mean that you can wear this for manual labor. Hmm. If so, I'm saying it's a pretty restricted kind of manual labor. Being a short boot, it's not particularly protective or supportive, although the leather is thick. 
uh, and I'll go more into that later, but being so sleek lasted, it's not exactly comfortable when you're kicking things around at work. I can't see a concrete worker or a steel worker wearing these in place of their technical work boots. Uh, I can't see tradies wearing these in, in place of their blundstones, for example, or their red wing mop toes. According to their website, the work chucker line uh, were made for indoor work. So what we're talking about office workers or people like finishing carpenters and cabinet makers. So let's take a look at the maker Red Wing Shoes. If you haven't heard of Red Wing, you're either new to the world of boots or you're a newborn child. <laughs> Red Wing loom large in the field of boots and are themselves an enormous company. They are amongst the top 50 largest companies in their home US state of Minnesota. Uh, some estimates of their revenue have them earning nearly 600 million US dollars a year in sales. So, uh, big company. They were founded by Charles Beckman in 1905 and are still based in the town of Red Wing, Minnesota. And that town having a population of under 20,000, I assume it's a bit of a company town. In the late 1980s, uh, they bought an old tannery founded in 1872 called SB Foot Tanning. This allowed them uh, full vertical integration in their operations from design to manufacture uh, to retail. Red Wing make a huge range of footwear, not only as Red Wing, but also under different brand names like Works and Irish Setter. The Red Wing brand is now split between their workwear category and their heritage boots. Some of their products are now made outside the US, primarily in Asian countries. Uh, but their heritage lines are still made in Minnesota, uh, in Missouri and Kentucky. Of course, their most famous heritage boots are the Iron Ranger and the 6-inch uh, mock toe boot. Now, let's move on and look at how these are put together. As usual, I'll start from the bottom uh, and I'll work my way up. Under it all is a Red Wing proprietary wedge sole they call the Atlas Tread Sole. It's a polyurethane plated sole, which is a polymer compound really, not a rubber. That polyurethane layer is made on top of a blown rubber layer in the wedge, uh, so it gives you durability uh, because of the toughness of the polyurethane, along with comfort because of the bounciness of that blown rubber. The sole pattern is an interesting one. I've never seen anything like it before. It does provide good grip under most conditions, including wet ones, uh, but the deep treads do tend to get dirty even if you don't pick up stones and gravel. The sole is attached to the uppers uh, using a 360 degree Goodyear welt construction. The advantage of a Goodyear welt is that it's water resistant and it can uh, be easily resold. I've done a video on Goodyear welting if you want to see it. Uh, I'll leave a, click, uh, a clickable link up there. Basically, it's a strip of leather called the welt uh, and it's affixed all the way around the boot. It's sewn on the inside edge to the turned in uppers of the boot, while the outside edge of that welt is then sewn to the midsole. Often it's also sewn through to the outsole, uh, but as in most wedge soles, that's not what happens here. The welt is sewn to a rubber midsole, and then the wedge outsole is glued on to the midsole. Some people freak out when they don't see a stitch under the boot, or they freak out if they see a stitch but it's not set inside a channel to protect that stitch. They think the outsole will fall off. Actually, the stitch going through the outsole is only, uh, only a reinforcement. Usually, the glues that bootmakers and cobblers use, if applied, activated and attached properly, is strong enough to hold on uh, any outsole. Inside the boot is a cork filler that fills the cavity caused by the 4 mil thick welt going around the outside edge of the boot. The cork filler gives long-term comfort as a footbed. Embedded in the cork filling is a steel shank to give the arch of the boot some stability. Although I have to say that I'm never really sure why a wedge sole boot with no gap between the heel and the ball of the foot needs extra arch stability. Uh, further on inside, the boot is a thick uh, leather insole. This is glued on top of the cork filling and steel shank. Uh, you can see it when you look inside the boot. I'm not sure the camera can pick this up. I can't measure the thickness of it, but from sight, I'd say it's also a very hefty four millimeters or so of uh, veg tanned goodness. The thick leather insole is also an aid to long-term comfort as it will mold to the shape of your foot with long enough wear. 
So moving on up, the uppers are made from uh, SB Foot's oil tanned leather in a color that they call Copper Worksmith. That's a good description. The colour is very reminiscent of a deep burnished copper with some undertones of purplish grey in certain light, which is why I've substituted the usual Taslon laces that come with the boot with these um, blue-grey laces, which I think really bring up that deep copper colour. As I've said, uh, Red Wing own SB Foot and they've been around for 150 years anyway, so you can say that they know uh, how to tan leather. While oil tanning is a centuries-old method of tanning leather in mostly fish oils, today it's really a way of finishing the leather in the tanning process. I'm pretty sure at SB Foot the hides are chrome tanned, and then when wet, the hides are finished by soaking in a rotating drum full of oils, uh, other tanning agents, and the dyes. What's produced, in this case at least, is a 2 mil thick leather that's supple, and at the same time tough and hardy especially where reinforced by the canvas lining in the vamp, uh, the leather can feel stiff. Inside the boot, as I've just said, the vamp is lined with canvas, but the shaft is unlined. The tongue is lined with the same leather, um, backed up on itself, turned around so that the two rough outsides are stitched together. The tongue is ungusseted, but it's short and it's two layers thick, so there is no tendency to slip to one side or the other. The heel counter is internal, it's not very thick, and I don't know for sure, but the flexibility makes me think that it's leather rather than some sort of plastic. Uh, on the inside, again, I'm not sure the camera will pick it up, it's covered by a suede heel counter cover. The suede's supposed to grip your sock and prevent heel slip. On the outside, the stitching is even and clean. Uh, there's the famous Puritan triple stitch with a single contrasting stitch. The Puritan stitching machine, which was first patented in 1893, actually stitches all three stitches at the same time, and Red Wing have their own full-time staff to repair and maintain their machines. The pattern is really attractive with this uh, little gap between the quarter pieces and the vat piece, uh, quite unusual. There are three simple nickel eyelets, and the edges of the facings and the collar are all nicely rolled. It's not too hard to take care of this leather. It's an oil-infused leather, so should keep itself reasonably hydrated unless you take it for a swim or, or through equally harsh conditions. As always, the key is to keep it clean. Give it a good brushing with a good horsehair brush after every, I'd say, three or four wears. And if it picks up sand and dirt, give it a wipe with a damp cloth to remove the worst of the dirt. If you do use this as a work boot, I would clean it every day and I would try and leave it for a day or two before you pick it up again. If it really gets dirty, you can saddle soap these boots. I have conditioned this pair once with a little smear of Neat's Foot oil. It didn't darken the leather at all, and to my touch has replaced the oily feel of the leather without making the surface um, tacky or oily. You can, I think, uh, also safely condition it with Venetian shoe cream, uh, that's my go-to conditioner for pretty much all of my uh, smooth leather boots. Or I'm sure you can also use uh, Big Four. Check out the description below for some links to where you can get these conditioners and other care stuff. Now to sizing and fit. If you subscribe to my channel, and if not, why not? Uh, you should click on subscribe now. If you've been following my other videos, you know that I'm true to size on a US Brannock device at 8.5 D width. That equates to a UK or Aussie size 7.5 in a regular or average width. However, in my heritage style boots, I usually wear an 8D because for some reason, boot companies make boots larger than they really are. So I wear an 8D in my Iron Rangers in the Rumi number 8 last and also an 8D in my 875 Mock Toes in the even roomier number 23 last. This is Red Wing's 210 last. Uh, a last is the foot-shaped mold that the bootmaker stretches the leather over to create the shape of the foot. So obviously, apart from being uh, foot-shaped, the last is also shaped in the shape of the design of that particular boot. The 210 last is a slim last, as you can see. It's a definite almond shape of the toe and sleeks in quite a lot from the ball of the foot into the toes. This is an 8D as well, and I have to say that while it fits, it is snug. 
The length is right. I have easily a thumb's width uh, ahead of my toe uh, to the end of the boot. The width at the ball of the foot is fine. The knuckles of my toes don't feel particularly squeezed. Where I do feel the snugness is in the toes, especially my little toes, where the last starts to curve into the tip. They don't hurt, but I suspect once they really break in, they'll be fine. Um, but at the moment, I feel like I really need to rub my toes in the evening when I take these off. Do you know the feeling? These are not fully broken in yet, so the sole is stiff still. The leather is stiff uh, and not yet warmed up by the heat of my feet over time. Uh, the insoles uh, still feel stiff. Uh, they're veg tan leather and I've not made any impression on them. I have a lot of boots <laughs> and chuckers are not my favourites, so I don't wear these often enough, so they haven't really broken in. Um, they're not my most comfortable boots, so I tend not to wear them a lot. It's a vicious circle. So guys, I'm actually going to sell these. I'm going to put them up on eBay, so check out my username there, Drive788. Uh, I'll put them there in the next few days if I haven't already by the time I uh, upload this video. Otherwise, DM me on my Instagram uh, account, techo, T-E-I-K-O-H, or one word. Uh, I'm going to ask, I think, Aussie $200 for them. Uh, I'll find out postage uh, to you, uh, wherever you are, and I'll let you know if you contact me. So on to cost and value. In the US, they sell for US $280. You can buy them in Australia from time to time, they're not always available, for around 420 to 500 Aussie bucks. You can get Iron Rangers here for just over 560. The classic 875 Mokto for about $550. I wouldn't even begin to compare them with Clark's Desert Boots, which you can get for under 200 Aussie dollars. There's just no comparison between the quality of the make or of the materials. A closer comparison might be made with Doc Martens, who also have chuckers that they sell for between 200 and 300 Aussie dollars. But even then, be aware that those are not Goodyear welted, uh, but they rely on DM's heat welting, which is not as easily resolvable. So, uh, all in all, it's probably a bit more expensive than other chucker boots you can get, uh, but honestly, a level above in terms of construction, uh, in terms of quality, and in terms of the materials. As I've said, chuckers are not my favourites, uh, but if I were looking for a tough, casual chucker, uh, would I buy these? Yeah, I would at that price. So there you have it, guys and gals. On the one hand, it's a tough, well-made boot, and with Red Wing's brand reputation, it's pretty much a winner. Uh, on the other hand, is it too tough for casual wear? I haven't really been able to break them in with my casual wear. I don't know. I've laid it out for you, so you be the judge. I hope you like this review. If you have, you know the drill. Click on the like button to help me grow my channel and therefore allow me to bring you more reviews. And if you haven't already, click on subscribe so you get to be notified when I upload more boot reviews, when I upload more deep dives into brands, and I make videos about comparisons and long-term wear reports. Until then, take care and I'll see you again soon.